There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Before I start talking a bit more about this video itself, what I'll do, I'll quickly acknowledge the source of this information, the source of the next video, for the next experiment, and the previous couple of videos. I got information from this book, the Chakranda HC Science Chemistry 2 book, and Hopefully there won't be any copyright issues because all of this is done purely for educational purposes. Um, but yeah, this experiment will be done in two stages. First, we're going to have the experiment which tests for anions, and then we're going to have the experiment which tests for cations. The actual top point is perform a first investigation to carry out a range of tests, so a couple of different types of tests, including the flame test, to identify the following ions, phosphate, sulfate, carbonate, chloride, barium, calcium, lead, copper, and iron. Remember, these were the ones which we covered in the last two videos, the different types of ions, anions and cations. Now, we're testing for anions first, and this is the equipment you have. You might have, you might do a different one in your class. That's, I mean, in terms of the experiment you do in class, it could be different, but overall, the main idea is the same. We're testing for anions and cations. The idea will be the same. So, what you might have is these dropper bo bottles, of the following solutions. So we've got sodium carbonate, sodium chloride, sodium sulfate, and sodium phosphate. The ones I've underlined in green, these are our anions. The ones we're testing, these are our anions. And you're also going to have a solution of, possibly a solution of silver nitrate, one more solution of nitric acid, barium chloride, barium nitrate, and ammonia solution. The ones I underlined in purple, these are your reagents. These are the ones which you're going to do your tests with. So in terms of your tests, what you're going to do is you're going to have four test tubes. Here are your test tubes. Inside your test tubes, you're going to have your solution. So you can see it's sodium carbonate, sodium sulfate, sodium chloride, and sodium phosphate. So these are your actual anion solutions. Remember, we said there's a sequence. Usually we start with this one first, carbonate testing first, then sulfate testing then chloride testing, then phosphate testing. Now, in terms of keeping that sequence, in this actual experiment, you don't have to keep the sequence because we know there's only one type of anion in that solution. If there were more than one type, different type, you would have to follow the sequence itself. Right? So, for example, if there's a sample that has many different types of anions or you don't know exactly what type of anions are inside, you would have to keep the sequence because you don't want to actually make your results unreliable. But in this case, because you know there's only one different type and you know the type as well, you don't have to actually worry about that. You can do the sequence in any way you want to. So first, we'll start with sodium carbonate. We'll just keep the sequence, but you don't have to in this experiment, but we'll keep to it. We'll do sodium carbonate first. And remember, we have, if we have, in this case, we have to have an acid, so we can add nitric acid. So what happens if we add nitric acid into the solution? If we add nitric acid in solution, what happens is the test will confirm that there's carbonate present by producing bubbles. There'll be gas bubbles being produced. And these gas bubbles are signs of carbonate, sorry, of carbon dioxide. And these carbon dioxide show that if you have a carbonate and you have an acid, they react to form carbon dioxide and water. So this has actually shown you that carbonate is inside the solution. And if you want to do the experiment again with water, just to show that if you add something else into it, nothing might happen. So if you add water into it, Nothing would happen, but if you add an acid into it, you have carbon dioxide being present. So therefore, you have identified that this solution has carbonate as the ion. The second solution, sodium sulfate, what we're going to do is first we're just going to try adding silver nitrate into the solution. Silver nitrate. So if we add silver nitrate in solution, which I will show you with this pink thing, silver nitrate, nothing will happen when we add silver nitrate. Why? Because sulfate. Is, so here's soluble, here's insoluble. Sulfate is soluble in everything except for barium and lead. So, so it will be soluble in silver, which means overall it will just dissolve when we put silver nitrate in the solution. But if we put in barium nitrate or barium chloride in the solution, so either or, what's going to happen is it's going to actually react. So it's going to have sulfate and barium inside. Barium and sulfate make an insoluble salt. So thereby, what you're going to see happen when you add those two together is you're going to see a precipitate forming, which means you know there is sulfate in that solution. With sodium chloride, what you're going to do first, you might try adding barium chloride or barium nitrate into that solution. And what you're going to see happen is nothing. 
because chloride is soluble with everything except for silver. So if you put in barium nitrate or barium chloride, it will simply dissolve. Whereas if you add silver nitrate in that solution, because it has silver in it, silver being Ag+, what's going to happen is it's going to react because chlorine is not soluble with silver. Thereby, you're going to see your white precipitate forming, which is a sign that sodium chloride is present. Now for the last one, sodium phosphate. Phosphate is soluble with only soluble with these things and not soluble with most other things. But remember, we have to add some ammonia in as well. So we're going to add some barium because it's not soluble with barium. But if you add only barium, nothing might happen. But if you add barium and ammonia solution, both of those combined, what you're going to see happen is the actual barium will react with the phosphate to form an insoluble salt, which you can see in white. So these kind of experiments you would just do, just to show that you can find out what is inside and you would have used the solubility rule to figure that out. Now the next one is the testing for cations. The testing for cations very similar to the last one. So we've got your different types of cations this time. I'm going to underline them in red. So there's still lead nitrate, copper nitrate, calcium nitrate, barium nitrate, iron nitrate, and solid iron ammonium sulfate, which you can then dissolve in water to make iron 2 be inside the solution. So these were all our cations. And then we also have our reagents, reagents which we're going to test them with. We're going to have hydrochloric acid. I'm going to underline the reagents in white. So hydrochloric acid, oh sorry, that's blue. Hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, sodium fluoride solution, sodium hydroxide, and ammonia solution. So all of these are our reagents. These are the ones we're going to test the actual cations with. And so we're going to have, again, the same thing. We're going to make your solutions up. 20 drops of each in, the, in 20 drops of each of your cation solution in your different types of test tubes. And what we're going to do first, lead nitrate. Remember what was lead nitrate reacting with? If you put in hydrochloric acid with lead nitrate, what we would expect to happen is we would expect it to react and form a insoluble salt, which we can then can see with a white precipitate. So by adding hydrochloric acid into it, we can confirm that the solution itself actually has lead in it. And remember, this was usually the first step, but we don't have to follow the same steps in this one because we're doing them separate, but if you were, this would, would be the first step. The second step would be to add into the calcium nitrate and barium, barium nitrate, you would add sulfuric acid in solution. If it reacts, so if this reacts with sulfuric acid, what that would mean is that either, that would mean that we have either calcium or barium or both present. In this case, we already know it because this has only calcium in it. So if, if it actually reacts, we would know it's definitely calcium. This one only has bar barium in it, so we would know it, if it were to react, it would definitely be barium. But what we can do as well is we can simply do the second test, right? That was the first test. And then the more exact test would be to add sodium fluoride solution. Sodium fluoride solution. Now in this case, what you're going to see is you're going to see a precipitate forming in the calcium nitrate one. And if barium nitrate were not present, you're not going to see a precipitate forming. So overall, this is just the second test we can do to differentiate between two. The next test we can do is for, for iron and for copper. And what we do is we add some sodium hydroxide at base. This is our reagent, we add them in all these test tubes. And what will happen if there is iron 2 inside here, it will turn into a brown precipitate. So the iron will react to form a brown precipitate with the sodium hydroxide, more specifically with the hydroxide iron. If there is iron 3 present here, it will react to form a sort of white greenish precipitate. And here in this copper nitrate, what you're going to see generally is you're going to see a blue precipitate forming. But this is not the end of the story for copper nitrate. Right? So we use sodium hydroxide to figure out if there's any iron in here. And this copper has also reacted, but we still have to do something else. We still have to add something else. We have to add ammonia solution. So to confirm that there's actually ammonia, sorry, copper in here, we have to add ammonia solution. And if these different types of precipitates, these blue precipitates, if they dissolve, when we add ammonia solution, so if they become a blue, blue solution, 
that is a confirmation test and that's basically not the primary test for copper nitrate, uh, sorry, for copper being present. So now we've just confirmed that copper itself is present. All right, so this one, there was a test, the second test was testing for both of them. And the third test was differentiating between which one's actually inside. Fourth test was testing for different types of iron that can be done for both of these. Fifth test was to differentiate between if there's actually copper in the last solution. And these were the ones which we covered in the last video. And also because it says you have to identify using different tests, including the flame test. We're also going to quickly cover the flame test. For a flame test, there are two different possible ways that you can do it. That you can do it. Either they're going to be you're going to have solutions in a spray bottle. It's called an atomizer bottle. You're going to have solutions of barium chloride. So sorry, barium. This is your cation, lead chloride, calcium chloride, copper chloride, or iron chloride. You're going to have solutions of that inside that bottle. What you're going to do is you're going to go to a flame, like a Bunsen burner. You're going to aim for that sort of upper section of that bluish flame. So you're going to look for the upper section of the bluish flame. And you're going to actually basically inject your solution into that flame. And you're going to look at the color change. Now, if that flame changes to, for example, red, that means that we're going to have that means that we're going to have calcium present. So red is calcium. If it changes to a green flame, that would mean that we have not calcium, but copper present. And if it changes to a sort of yellow green flag uh, flame, a uh, flag flame, if it changes to a yellow white greenish flame, that would mean that barium is present. Now the other ones, iron chloride. So iron, we can't really test with a flame test, and we can't really fl um, test lead either. But the other three, so the barium chloride, calcium chloride, and copper chloride, we can use the flame test as a confirmation test to definitely confirm that this different thing is in there. But we can use it with an atomizer bottle, or we can do it with a wire as well. If we do it with a wire, what we have present is we have salts of barium, lead, calcium, copper, and iron. Salts in their actual grainy form, in the crystal form. You're going to have some hydrochloric acid solution as well present. And you're going to have your Bunsen burner. What you do is, this is your actual, this is your holding part. This is your hold here, with your hand. And you're going to have wire attached to the front. What you do first is you basically dip it into hydrochloric acid. You're going to have hydrochloric acid sort of on top, front of here. But you're going to make sure that to put it in the flame to see that the flame doesn't change color at all. Right? So you're going to do it, dip it inside until the flame doesn't change color anymore. That means it's not contaminated with anything else. Once that occurs, you're going to dip it, re-dip it into your hydrochloric acid and then dip it into different types of salts afterwards. Right? So after you've confirmed that there's nothing else present, you're going to have salt grains kind of sticking on it a bit. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put this wire into the blue part of the flame, and you're going to observe if the co if flame changes color. Uh, if red, that means it's red means it's calcium, uh, greenish means it's copper, and uh, did I say it right? Yeah, copper is greenish, and so yellow greenish is barium, right? So that's what be using wire or your atomizer bottle, that's your flame test. I'll quickly sum it up that again in terms of experiment. Experiment it would have been quite simple. You would have had your different types of solution, and then you test your different types of reagents to see which ones react with which ones. And you would have done that for your anion experiment, your cation experiment, and then last you would have done a confirmation test for your cations. So your flame test is a confirmation test for your cations, and you've done all of that just to figure out if you can figure out um, what actual ions are present in solution. So it says, perform a first investigation to carry out a range of tests, including flame tests, to identify the following ions. So all you have to do is you have to be able to find out which one is in the solution. Hopefully that's useful. Thank you for watching.